Coach, uh, getting the chance to look back at the game this past weekend, or some of your takeaways, what are kind of things you want to focus on for the next week? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've talked about it a little bit. I mean, you look back at it, we had 11 penalties for 125. Ten of those were in the first three quarters, most in the first half, which I think contributed to a lot of our offensive woes. There was never any rhythm. Um, we'd do something, we'd go one step forward, two steps back, always behind the chains, all third and longs. Um, so we just never really got moving in the first half. Second half, we played pretty good on offense. Um, went right down and got points, moved the ball even in the drives. We didn't quite get it. Um, scored 19 points or set basically two touchdowns and a field goal, I think, on five drives in the second half. So we started playing SMU football towards the end. I think we had 200 yards to their 50 in the fourth quarter. We had one penalty. You know, there's a lot to do with that. Um, defensively, I thought we played hard. I thought we ran to the ball well. Um, you know, at times we didn't leverage and stop the run like we want to. It's hard when it's everything's quarterback plus one runs. Um, but still, their average per rush was low. Uh, I think, you know, we, we kept them except for two big plays from being too explosive in the passing game. So, um, you know, you do things like the penalties. You have a, a snap go through your punter's hands and give them a free touchdown, basically. I mean, you do those things. It's a recipe to get beat. And uh, so we didn't play very well at all first half. There's just no getting around it. We started to play SME football towards the end, and that needs to continue into this week. What goes into making sure that you carry over that second half and no one reverts back to it? Yeah, go to work. There's no secret formula. We, we get up, we practice. We, we came in on Sunday and did what we do. We came in yesterday, installed the game plan. We had a good physical Tuesday practice this morning. Um, there's no excuse. We didn't play well, but it, first games are tough. Um, you know, I think. Last year, Kansas won nine games. They went on the road there as a 28-point favorite and won by seven. Would have been the exact same score if we'd got the two-point conversion. Like, we won. It's hard to win. We didn't uh, necessarily play our best for a good half of the game. But I think our guys know what it takes to be a good team. I think they feel like we can be a good team. we got to go prove that we can consistently do it for four quarters. But there's no panic button being pushed here. Like I said, we're 1-0. You mentioned uh, stopping the run. and. In the first half, you gave up a little over 100 yards. Second half, it was like 30 or something. Mm -hmm. Were there any, what adjustments did you see that, or were there any specific adjustments that you think worked better in the second half? Yeah, I think we just settled down. Um, you know, I think we were pressing across the board as a team in the first half, whether it be the play calls, whether it be the way we were playing. Um, there's there's such a, I mean, there is a factor. Sometimes you're too excited to play, and so you kind of play emotional and hesitant, and and in your body just you don't cut it loose. And, you know, we gave up some big runs on some QB draws on third and long and stuff like that. That uh, again, we just we did a better job of of spilling things, containing the edges of the defense, and, and swarming to the ball. Um, again, our offense moved the ball better, so we controlled it. I mean, the, the time of possession was like 36 to 23, and that's with us winning the fourth quarter. Like it was hard. We were out there a lot, and some of it, a lot of it was self-inflicted. But like I said, I just think we settled down at halftime, came out. Played SMU football. I think had we not had the issue on the fourth and 30 that gave them a free first down and a long drive, the second half might have even felt entirely like the fourth quarter. I guess just speaking of that, have you been able to find film of, of that whole scenario with Cross? Yeah. I mean, look, uh, it's it's over. It is what it is. I, I don't feel like there's any evidence that, that he misrepresented our program in that moment. Um, the call was made. We respect it. I think um, everyone does a good job. We're moving forward. Um, look, the penalties are not good. We have to handle our motion better regardless of what someone does to you. You can't put yourself in a position to cost a team like that, and he knows that. Um, and same thing with other scenarios when guys maybe retaliated and got a 15-yard penalty. Like, you can't do that. And, and look, we allowed them to, to get us um, you know, emotionally unstable in some of those situations in the game, and it cost us. And it could have easily and very well cost us the game. But... Um, yeah, I've looked at it, and um, we feel like we're all in a good position moving forward. And I um, think he knows he hurt the team, but also I don't, I don't know if, if it went down exactly as it said it was. SMU fans got to see Prashard Smith for the first time, but what did you learn about the running game as a whole? Week zero? Yeah, I mean, it's a little deceptive. Um, we ran for almost 140-plus yards. I mean, we lost all the yards on the punt snafu. So... Uh, for the game, we still averaged over four yards of carry. You'd like to be closer to five. Brashard himself was six yards of carry. Um, it wasn't explosive ever. They did a nice job the way they were playing. It, they would rally, and we'd get four, five, six yards. Um, so it needs to be better. It needs to be more explosive, especially when you know they're playing pass and we're not maybe being as explosive as we'd like to be. Um, it's a work in progress. 
Uh, we had a lot of guys playing on the line in different spots where maybe a couple plays we were just a hair off from making it a bigger play. So hopefully we'll continue to get better at that. I do think the, the really good sign is that um, that drive late, I think we got the ball, it was like third and one on like the 32 or three, and we ran it three straight plays for a touchdown. That's, that's the explosiveness we need in our run game more often. The team depth is obviously a big conversation this offseason. Uh, do you feel like you got to see enough of everyone or just kind of because of the yeah. nature of the game that it, you need to cycle? Probably around. in some positions, yes. In some positions, no. I mean, like, I think the depth helped us. I mean, we won the fourth quarter and we finished, and that was really important. So we were fresh. I think you look at the team depth helped us in places like RJ Maryland. He had a big game. He only played 38 plays because Matt Henry played 34. Stone Eby played 10. Like in the past, RJ would have played 60, 70 plays. I don't know how much he'd have left in the tank in that fourth quarter. But he was fresh, and, and those other guys made plays. Um, and then there's other areas that maybe guys didn't get in as much as we had hoped. And um, sometimes when the game goes the way it did, that happens. But uh, we'll continue to play the guys that deserve to play, and hopefully that's a lot because we're going to need that depth. Oh, you talked it. about using Kevin early in the first quarter. Yep. What did you see from the little bit he got and just what went into the decision to go with Preston the rest of the yeah. way? Yeah. Uh, we, we followed our plan going into the game. Preston was going to start, go the first two drives. Kevin knew he was going to play the third and the fourth series. So that was how we went into the game. Thought he did really well, uh, including even the second series, taking us on a touchdown drive. Uh, we went back to Preston. That was always the plan. You know, we told both those guys, no matter what happens in those drives, that's what we're going to do. Because you don't want them out there pressing and going, man, I got to score. I'm not going back. Like, go play. Um, did intend to play Kevin Moore. And, you know, the game went the way it did. And, you know, there's a lot of people can say what they want. Uh, we won. So feel good about what happened. But Kevin did really well, which you expected him to. And he earned the right to continue to play and, and hopefully play even more. So I suspect you'll see more of him this week. And that's, that's not a slight to anybody. That's a compliment to him. And is that important? You mentioned it a little bit, but important for them to kind of have an idea of when that's going to happen. So, like you said, there's not that kind of yeah. looking over my shoulder or, or pressing. I, or I think so. As a quarterback, like it's hard if you know, hey, you're going to go this series. Well, the one series, you know, sometimes the series doesn't go well. And it's not your fault. Like it's, you want them to get in a rhythm as much as they can, and that's the challenge with playing two guys. At the same time, if you don't know, it's hey, you're going to play, but you don't tell them when then either he doesn't know when to expect it, and sometimes the situation dictates it and you don't do it. So by telling them, it helps us do it. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's I think that's the best way, at least we're taking it week to week, but, but right now. A lot of the focus has been on the fact you're playing an ACC schedule this year, but after this week it's all power conference from here on out. What do you need to see against an opponent like Houston Christian to kind of get you ready for yeah. all those power conference teams? Well, we need to win. That's all we're worried about. Um, last week probably teaches everybody that. And, and we need to play four good quarters of football. You know, uh, first game of the season, they're always crazy and weird. They just are. Um, sometimes it goes the way you want like it has for us the last two years. Sometimes it goes like it did Saturday night, but we won. Um, but, but now we have to start to see that consistency of performance. You know, we, we did play <clears throat> some guys in some different spots. In some places we feel like that's best, in some places we're going to move some guys around. I do think we feel like on both sides of the ball, now that we've had you know, the summer, fall camp, and an actual game in an adverse situation, we know, one, how our team will respond. We just don't need to put ourselves in those positions anymore than we have to. And two, I think we know where all the pieces need to go that not only this week, but over the coming weeks, it's, it's the best fit for our team, whether it be O-line, wide out, D-line, DB. And so I just want to see us play harder and finish, start better, obviously. You know, last year we were a great first quarter team. The other night we were a terrible first quarter team. So hopefully we can start faster and continue to finish the way we did. What are you looking at with Houston Christian? Obviously a program coming up, one of the best seasons I think they've had. And yeah. And still pretty good coaching staff. So what are you about that? Yeah, well, you know, Jason's taking over as head coach. Phenomenal job with the offense. They had their winning season last year. Um, so explosive. Um, they spread the field. They, they can play fast. They can throw it. They can run it. They, they do a nice job offensively. Um, I think they got a new defensive coordinator. He's one of the best defensive minds coming from our state. Um, you know, it, it's two weeks in a row that we don't have any game film on our opponent, and they have tons of film on us. Um, that's part of it. Usually, you play one game a year like that. We're playing two, and so I think we have to be ready to adjust. I mean, we have an idea what they're going to do offensively. We have an idea on defense, but they got a new DC, and they've had all off season, so. I mean, you have no idea what you're going to get um, defensively. So you, you plan the best you can, but you got to be ready to adjust um, in game. And I think they're going to be well coached. They're going to be excited to play. It's their first game. And then hopefully we can make a big jump from game one to game two.
you have any injury updates? Any injury updates? Uh, we did not have any major injuries in the game. So, um, you know, a Andrew Chambly is is almost day to day, week to week right now. I don't know yet if he's available this week, but I can't rule him out. Um, my hope would be that he could could dress and be available. He did more in practice today than he did all of last week, so that's a hope I think. Um, other than that, I mean, we got some guys just nicked and banged up and some some bruises, but um, we came out of the game long term pretty good shape and I don't think anybody other than potentially Chambly that was out is back so just your thoughts on how the first game of in helmet communication went on both sides of the ball yeah I think it's an adjustment offensively other than the fact that the first three plays I didn't even use it because like one you've never had it and two in practice she's talking to a walkie on a game you got to push a button I think it was the third play Preston screamed from the field I can't hear you and I'm like oh, I'll fix it I just need to hit the button you know so there's a reason he wasn't hearing me. I was calling plays like I've done for 15 years. You know, I don't usually have to use my hands. Um, but I think it was good. It, there was once or twice that it kind of stalled out for a, a play or two, but nothing, nothing major. Um, you know, he may have a different opinion. You can ask him. Uh, I think defensively, it's a different adjustment. You know, I think because defenses have to react to the offense. So if the offense is going fast. They got to get a call in, and, and sometimes it doesn't matter if you got a helmet. One guy, there's still ten other guys out there, right? And then, and then offenses are smart. We do it some now too when you're not going like huddle up. And defensive coordinators can't see the picture to call their defense on. That's what they like to do now. That's how they've adjusted to teams that spread the field no huddle like us. They see the formation and call their defense based off tendencies and formations. Um, so if you're not going fast, you give a defensive coordinator an advantage. But also if you huddle and bust out and snap it somewhat old school, you kind of mess with them now because they've adapted. And so I think our defense probably learned a lot. I think they'll adjust. I think it was probably a bigger challenge for them than it was for us offensively. Um, and then hopefully we'll just get better and better. But I did like the idea, like in, in, especially those last two drives late in the game, I was able to call the play and then just give Preston like a thought. Like, so he knew, he and I were on the same page on that last drive. and I think it helped. Obviously you had the botch snap on the that one play was really, really bad. And um, but other than that, I thought we played well on special teams. I think we dominated on kickoff coverage. We tackled them inside the twenty a few times, and then you know they had the misstep where they stepped out on the two kickoff return. We got the ball midfield twice. Um, that's big time. We didn't get a chance for a return, um, but we also you know uh, we had one. We I think we could have blocked. We just missed. I thought our punt return unit was good. Uh, like I said, I think punt team, other than the one play, they, they were solid. Um, uh, we, we probably got to finish the tackle a little bit better. You know, we gave them like a 10 yard return a couple times, but we were running down there playing hard. We protected well. Um, you know, we just can't have a high snap and let it go through our hands and, and give somebody free points. And then we did miss a 51 yard field goal, which was unfortunate, but we also made a 52 and a 35. So, uh, and our protection was good. So I think we were a lot better than we were in uh, the areas we needed to be, but the one glaring issue is a, a really big one. Uh, you mentioned their new defensive coordinator coming from a D3 mm -hmm. school. Batchel's not far removed from being a head coach at a D3 school. How kind of cool is it to see that from especially Texas to to see that talent and, and them getting their shots? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if, what level of ball you're coaching. I mean, the high school coaches in Texas are better than half the college coaches in the country. You know, they just need the opportunity. and. Um, you know, those guys have done a great job everywhere they've been, and that's why they're continuing to move up. And I think that's why Houston Christian is going to be a really good program. I think they're going to compete really well in their league this year and into the future. And I think we'll continue to see both those guys continue to rise. Um, but you can tell if a guy can coach. You look at his history, he's won everywhere he's been, whether it be high school and, and other colleges. And, um, but it is cool. Texas coaches um, doing well. You know, like I said, other than when we got to play him like this, we're always pulling for our teams in the state. Awesome. Thank nice you. to be inside. All right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Just kind of tell us what it was like suiting up last Saturday. Obviously, the first half maybe didn't go exactly you planned, but you still came out with the win. What was that like? Um, it was just getting our feet back wet for the first time of the season. I feel like we did pretty good. We came, well, we started off a little slow, but we finished off strong. How important maybe is that to see that when things aren't going your way and maybe even shoot yourself in the foot or whatever, that this team has the makeup to overcome that and still get the win? 
Uh, I mean, it's just all about belief with this team. Like this team is really good, and I feel like we could play with anybody. It's just we just got to be on the same page, and we play together. No one can stop us. What did you learn about kind of the depth of this team, and do you feel like that kind of showed later on in the game? I feel like we got depth everywhere. I mean, we could we could put guys at receiver, at running back. We could put guys at running back, at receiver. So it's like we can move the, move the ball at, like everywhere. It's just I feel like we we, we got we got a, a dangerous offense where we're going. What was it like, kind of working? Uh, I know the, the plan was to have Kevin come in at quarterback and then third drive, uh, third and fourth drive. What was it kind of like working with both of them in a real in game situation? Uh, I love them both. They're both awesome quarterbacks. Uh, Kevin, I feel like he's he's a dynamic quarterback as well. I feel like when both of, both of those guys are in, it's, it's like the same same type of quarterback, really. And then for you personally, you know, first real game at running back, was it a big adjustment? You still caught a couple passes, but your majority of your work was running the football. So what was that like for you? Uh, I'll say... I, it wasn't. I mean, I, I like the ball in my hands, so I don't. I don't have a problem with it. But yeah, I don't have a problem with the ball in my hands. How did you feel the rotation went with all three of you guys in there? I feel like it went. It went pretty well. Uh, yeah, it went pretty well. What's this now been like? Is you know you move into the new facility, you're getting ready for that first home game of the season. Just how is how is the focus of, of this group coming off, off the uh, first game going into this one? I mean, we've seen last, the first week how we came out, so we got to take every every game serious, and it's like to the start, to the finish. So we got to take every game serious. And then you had some success on special teams last week. Is that something now where you really feel like that's a threat every week for you or whoever's returning the kicks? Mm -hmm. I feel like I should have scored that kid return, but that's on me. Uh, I don't get some. Preston, I think uh, post game compared you to Reggie Bush. Um, that was that was his comparison. What, what do you think of that? Uh, I mean, Preston, that's my guy. He he likes me a lot. Just cause I guess I bring a lot to the table. I could swing out. I could run the ball. So uh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> Like playing the same offense as RJ Maryland coming off the game like that. RJ's a dog. Like he he literally won us that game. Hats off to RJ. He's a he's a dog. He's a guy. Anything else, guys? I think that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.